Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the courtyard of the Pentagon where we're covering DOD Lab Day, uh, an exposition of technology from each of the military services as well as the Defense Department. And we have with us Holly Peach, who is with uh, TARDEC, with the Tank Automotive Research Development and Engineering Center, not command. Uh, and I want to talk to you about Wea Man. There are crash test dummies for automotive purposes, but there hasn't been one when you're looking at MRAPs and armored vehicles. Talk to us a little bit about how important this is to generating armored vehicles and in the future are going to save soldiers' lives. Well, it's really important because having the device that actually mimics a human in the situation that we are actually finding in underbody blast is really critical. Using injury criteria from automotive, which is a completely different direction and a, a completely different loading rate, just doesn't provide the information that we need to understand the injury and to be able to predict it well enough to um, improve our technology designs. So uh, making changes to vehicle seats and restraints and flooring and vehicles in general. So to improve the vehicle, get the mission done, and bring the soldiers back home safely. We really need to have um, we really need to have more specificity and a, a more human-like dummy. Talk to us about the kind of what happens to an armored vehicle when it hits um, an IED, and how violent that impact is, and what are the kind of forces and stresses that a human being is going through that this uh, Wea Man is is trying to help you document. So when the, the vehicle rolls over an IED and explodes underneath, there is um, a blast wave that comes through first, and then there's a large amount of um, ejecta or, or soil that comes up and impacts the vehicle at the bottom. And so for the mounted soldiers, the ones that are inside the vehicle, the blast wave is, is uh, not the primary loading factor for them. It's, it's the forces that are applied to the vehicle, and then the vehicle launches up and applies forces into the feet, into the pelvis, and so on and so forth. So as we go up in vertical um, direction, that's where we see the, the most severe injuries and lessening as we go up. So ankles, uh, feet, um, pelvis, lumbar are very, very critical injuries for us here. And they're also critical injuries for uh, quality of life and, and threat to life as well. How long before you develop a, a WEA woman, a, a female version of this, given that women are taking a lot of the same risk that men are, whether they're in the back of an armored vehicle or personnel carrier, you name it, they're exposed to the same sorts of dangers that men are. And especially now that, that all of these jobs are open to women anyway. So the project actually right now is investigating the differences between males and females. And through that investigatory study, we will be able to determine what the necessary steps are. If, if another dummy is required, if uh, size is the most important factor, or if the, the physical geometry of the skeleton really is the most important factor. And so through that in initial study, we'll determine whether another dummy needs to be developed in a follow-on project, or um, what, what the exact uh, necessary path is. And uh, why is it that it took so long to develop this? Because one would have thought that this kind of a dummy would have been developed long ago when we were sort of at the height of um, the IED crisis, fielding MRAPs, fielding MATVs, fielding these vehicles, uh, where a lot of these challenges were, were known. Obviously, the body of knowledge uh, grew. Uh, we did rely a lot on overseas technologies. Why has it taken so long to develop this kind of a dummy approach? So uh, these threats still exist, right? Uh, and we, we also have to um, really focus on the, the development of a dummy takes a, a lot of information. There's a lot of biomechanics research that goes into uh, ensuring that we are actually representing the human properly. This dummy has actually been designed in about half the time of any of the automotive dummies. Even this Hybrid 3 that's behind me here, uh, which is at least 30 years old, took many, many years to develop and, and we are well ahead of the game in, in speed of development of, of these dummies. So we're, um, we're still able to uh, understand the, the threat and, and get those, those protective devices in, in the vehicle faster because we brought that, uh, brought that development up to a much faster pace than what is usually done. Holly, thanks very much. Best of luck with the program. Thank you very much.